Hey. Hey. What's up? What's up with you? All good. Today, what are we talking about? We're talking about uh, the latest haul from Spiel 2017. So what are we going to talk about first? I think a good place to start is um, the game that we've both been talking about for ages. Wait, is it this one? That would be the one. Rogers of the Ganges. It's from the designers of Village, and we've been excited about it for a while. For a very, very long time. So um, we got to play it last night. What did you think? I thought it was, ve- I thought it was really good. Um, I thought it was very, very smooth. I thought the, um, the art on it was fantastic. Um, but it's one of those games that I think that um, you don't really get a full flavor for playing it the first time around. I think, it, it, I think this is a game that will definitely reward multiple players. I think so too. I mean, I, it, it took a while to get into because there are quite a few rules. And <laughs> I think we got them all right. So that was good. But uh, the game itself is just, as you said, super smooth. I was really struck by the fact that it was just easy to get into the, the um, trying to get your engine together was really quite easy and uh, played, you know, a little sort of lighter than I expected it to be. Sure. I think I was expecting it to be sort of village level and it ended up being a little lighter than that. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think yeah. um, for what it is, I think it's great. Yeah. Um, I think, as I said, you know, component quality is great. I just really, really enjoyed it. And I think you hit the nail on the head last night when you said, I think the mark of a good game or a game like this is you feel it's over too quickly. Yeah, for sure. Another one that we were really looking forward to coming out of Essen Spiel was Indian Summer. Now, I am one of the biggest Uwe Rosenberg fans. I buy pretty much all of his games. And I bought Cottage Garden last year, and we yeah. played it last year after Essen. Um, this time, I was umming and eyeing about whether or not I really wanted it. And at the last minute, I kind of went, well, I'm, I'm going to pick it up anyway. So we played it the other night. What did you think? I absolutely adored it. This is uh, The only word I can use to describe this game is sumptuous. Everything from, from, from the visual, how striking the visuals are, yeah. of the actual game itself, to the gameplay itself. It's one of the few games that my wife has actually come out and said she absolutely loves yeah. straight off the bat. And you ended up ordering it. And I ended up <laughs> ordering it pretty, pretty much as soon as we'd finished playing it. It's just, it, it is, it is a, a beautiful game. Um, um, very slick, very smooth, in true Uwe Rosenberg fashion. That's awesome. And as you say, it really looks great on the table. It's got uh, these autumn leaves that you're filling the forest floor with and I really enjoyed the animals and I think that my wife's going to enjoy that part as well. So that was when she looked at it and said, well, she enjoyed Cottage Garden. She she thinks she might like Indian, Indian Summer as well. So looking forward to taking that back home and uh, getting more plays of that. It's a great game. It's, it's, it really is a lovely game. Um, uh, no hesitation in recommending this one. One of the games that I've been eagerly anticipating from Spiel um, is actually one of the small box games called Songbirds. Um, originally, this was released as uh, Birdie Fight, but it's been released in 2017, or released in 2017 as Songbirds. And I absolutely love this game. Uh, and that's from Homo Sapiens Labs, the guys out of Taiwan. Right? That's right, that's right. Um, uh, absolutely uh, beautiful, beautiful pictures. Um, and for what it is, a small box game with just cards. Surprisingly deep, I thought. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it did. I think you mentioned when we played it that it had shades of Arboretum in it, it giving us a little bit of a, a feel for uh, a bit of a tougher game in a small footprint. I, uh, I am a huge, huge fan of Arboretum, um, and I was hoping in the lead up to getting this game that this would be very similar, uh, and it didn't disappoint. It's, it's, it's really intense, it's a bit of a brain burner. But it's, it's, it's very, very satisfying to play. Yeah, and I, a couple of times I thought I had you and... Uh, <laughs> the, Al- the Arboretum curse strikes again, man. <laughs> it does. <laughs> so in keeping with the bird theme, there's another bird game out of uh, Taiwan. And this is called Aves. Aves. Who knows? <laughs> so another beautiful game. Some mostly uh, just a card game. It's relatively simple in terms of rules. But actually, again... 
kind of deep uh, in terms of the gameplay. So really liked it. It was one that I found was perfect on the plane. You could play because there's only just a few cards and you can play it next to each other. <laughs> yeah. It was really great. I, I played it with someone on the plane back from, from Essen. Um, and so it was one of the first games I played after I left Essen. And, and I thought it was really great. What did you think? I, I, really, I really enjoyed it. I've, I've got to say that um, I've been really, really pleasantly surprised this year with a lot of the games coming out of Essen as to how visually striking they are. Yeah. Um, this, is, this is no different. Beautiful, vibrant colors, as yeah. you would expect in a, in a bird game. But again, um, f for what it is, surprisingly deep. The depth of some of these card games is just phenomenal. Um, yeah. uh, and, and, and really, really pleasurable as well because it scratches the itch of the experienced gamer, but also it's a really great, and I hesitate to use the term gateway game, but you know, for, for drawing people who are not used to this type of games into, into the world, um, games like this are great, you know, visually arresting, um, surprisingly deep, and uh, uh, you know, it's the type of game that you have on a table and people walking past are immediately sort of stop and drawn, are drawn to. So, yeah. And in that line, there's another one out of Taiwan. This is Shadows in Kyoto. Which again, really great artwork. Um, pretty much just a small version of strategy when you look at it, yeah, right? Yeah. And um, doesn't seem like it's going to be terribly deep, but actually, I found it to be quite interesting. We've only played the basic game, and looking forward to trying some of the other cards that the equipment, as well as the specialists that come into the game. Uh, what did you think of that? I really enjoyed this um, Shadows in Kyoto. Um, it was it was one of those games that sort of took me a bit by surprise. Uh, I expected it to be a lot um, lighter than it was. Yeah. Um, but it's 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 a great it's a great little filler game. Um, highly highly recommended. And it's done in the same universe as Hanamakoji. That's the which, one. Which was a game we played a couple of weeks ago, just to, just before us, and then we really enjoyed it. That's also a, just a two player game, uh, which we thought was great. Another two player game that we picked up at Essen was Pocket Ops, and that's also taking kind of a small, different game like tic-tac-toe or something like that and turning it into something that's actually a hell of a lot com more competitive. I, I thought, when you described this to me when you picked it up at Essen, I thought your description was spot on having played this. What did you call it? Tic-tac-toe meets? Um, Metal, Metal Gear, Gear Solid. Solid. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I've always loved that idea of the covert um, operatives and the spies and you know, so the way that they brought it in is really great, I thought. It's a, it's a goodie. It's a, it's a fun game to play. Um, it's one of those games that, that make you laugh out loud, I think. Um, yeah. Just because of the, the, the sheer level of, um, of, of, <laughs> of being able to stymie your opponent and the frustration on their faces. And I think it is going to be a bit polarizing. It was a really quick game uh, and it was something where you kind of need to get into your opponent's head. And you're trying to anticipate their moves. Yeah, so sure. I play a card, and uh, before you get to make your move, and if you, if I've anticipated your move correctly, then you don't get to make that move. And that's the basic idea of the game. And I, you know, I thought that was really interesting the way that they've done it. Really small game. Uh, we it only cost something like twelve euros on the last day at uh, at the fair, and um, was a, a really good find for us. Last day purchases for the win so far. <laughs> <laughs> so another one that I was looking forward to picking up was Harvest and one of the first games that got me into the hobby was Agricola which was something where you're talking about farming and some relatively basic mechanics but then in, interwoven with a whole lot of other stuff and so a game that was coming out um, at Essen was called Harvest from TMG this is something that I really wanted to pick up. The box was a little bit bigger than I had anticipated. I watched some video beforehand. Very interesting that it has poop meeples in it. I mean, that was the biggest seller for me, um, reading up on it before. Uh, poop meeples tick um, on the list. Really. <laughs> but I mean, I, I don't know about you. I was, it may, might be a bit unfair. We've only had the one playthrough, but I was slightly underwhelmed by this one. Yeah, I was looking for a bit more out of it. There was something that didn't quite fit for me. The, the you know, they were trying to do something very quirky, and the artwork reflected that. And I, and to some extent, I like that. And I, I picked this one up and Harbor as well. And so I'm looking forward to playing that one with you. But it, it didn't quite do it, and it felt like for such a small and relatively simple game, they felt like there was there was too much of an overhead. 
um, they were, it, it felt a little fiddly, and so I wasn't quite getting it. I mean, as I say, it's it's early days. We've only played it once, but I, I just thought there were just so many components for what it was. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, the table was full yeah, of these I, little I, shits. Right? Exactly. Um, and I'm, that's not necessarily a, a, a bad thing no, in some sure. games, but I think for games like this where it does become very fiddly. The other thing that um, you actually mentioned again, and it was a very good point, was that the, the rule book also seemed slightly slightly small for what it was. Yeah, and it's not often that I'm asking for a bigger rule book, but I, I felt like... <laughs> for to explain them so well. <laughs> for a game that size, I kind of felt like it needed a little bit more explanation. It wasn't always 100% clear, so I would have liked a little bit more. But the jury's still out, so we'll we'll try that. Yeah, again. watch the space. Another one that we tried was uh, Pot de Vin, I guess, is the way you might say it. I guess. <laughs> I saw this artwork, and my uh, good friend, or new friend from, from Holland, um, Kabolter, were recommended this to me and as soon as I saw the artwork I knew where I'd seen it before which was the Bloody Inn which was a fantastic game which I don't think you've played yet I still haven't played that and I really recommend it so it's the same artist this is a game that really when I read about it and when I heard from the the lady who was selling it uh, what it was like and she started talking about the the scoring reminded me of Fox in the Forest which was a game that you bought recently which we played uh, and we really enjoy it, really but it's only a two-player trick-taking game where you're trying to, to take as few tricks as possible or as many tricks as possible, So, but you don't want to be caught in this sort of um, no-man's land in the middle. Yeah. Same thing on Pot de Vin, which I think was a great idea, but I feel like it didn't quite land. No, I, I, I think, I think the, I, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a sucker for trick-taking games, so if you give me a trick-taking game on this... Happy as the day is long. But this, something was just slightly off on this one. We, we played it with four players, didn't we? Yeah. Um, so uh, you would have expected it to, to flow a bit better. Um, uh, there were also some mechanics that, I, I, I sort of, that didn't quite gel with me. Um, yeah. And it, it didn't help that uh, we didn't quite explain trick-taking to one of the four players. <laughs> yes, uh, in our infinite wisdom, we proceeded on the basis that everybody knew what a trick-taking game was. Yeah, and maybe that wasn't the best call. Not, uh, not so much. <laughs> Moving on then, so Century Golem Edition. Not a new release, but something that I think you said they were only selling at conventions? I, 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 having, having played this game and being taken by it, um, of course... Uh, be, not being able to go to post Essen means uh, I'm buying every every game that I see, yeah. <laughs> almost. Yeah. Um, but I looked for this online, and uh, uh, apparently um, you can only get it at, at game fairs, um, along with... The playmat, and I was... I, would, I don't want to say suck it into it, but I, w I was swept up in the wave of uh, acquisition disorder and, and ended up buying this map, um, kind of sight unseen, I, I'm not at all regretting it. I think it, it's a great addition to the, the the game, and it looks amazing on the table. I I've only played um, Century Spice Road once. I really enjoyed it, but I've got to say, Golem Edition really really uh, hits the hits the mark for me. Yeah, I think it's the way to go. The 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 little uh, gems that they've done look great. It's completely overproduced. I mean, the game itself is really small, really, um, you know, uh, pretty simple. A lot of people are calling it the Splendor Killer. I'm not convinced. I mean, I think that they're quite different games. Uh, and, and in some ways, I feel like Splendor is not a complete game, and maybe some of the expansions that are coming out now will help with that. And I feel a little bit of the same with Century. Like, it's a game which is not quite a filler, but Almost, yes. Yeah, it's one of those games that's sort of betwixt and between, isn't it? It's not n n not the primary game that you, you bring to the table for a night of gaming, yeah. but it's also not, not exactly a filler. So it's, it's, it's somewhere, somewhere in between. Yeah. So I, I do like it. I'm glad I bought it. Um, I'm looking forward to trying it a bit more. Uh, another game that we want to try a bit more is Secrets. What's that on the, uh, on the box of you? Uh, <laughs> is someone written on your Secrets box? Yeah, so that's a signature that I got from Bruno uh, Faduti, who's one of the designers. And the other designer, of course, is Eric Lang, who I think we both like. I mean, I like him a lot because of uh, Blood Rage and um, also Rising Sun, which is coming pretty that's, soon. That, 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 that seemed, uh, looking at the, the blurb before Essen on this, 
that seemed like the dream team to me. Yeah, it's a pretty good team, and they've both done a lot of uh, you know heavier games, but also lighter games. Bruno Faduti was I first heard of him when I played Citadel some Citadel, years ago, yeah. Yeah. and that was all about hidden roles, and so it's not a big stretch for him to then be making something like Secrets, which I think you know my favorite part of Secrets is the fact that. Apart from the KGB and the CIA, you can also be the hippie. And so the hippie <laughs> wins when everybody else loses. Yes. And I think that was a, was a great um, addition to the game. Yes, surprise, surprise. <laughs> Adil, Adil seeking the third way. <laughs> <laughs> and I was really encouraged by the reaction that one of our friends had the other night. I mean, he just loved this game after we played it. I mean, it's impossible to play a game like Secrets without a smile on your face, right? Yeah. I, I think... I think with any game like that, that's how you know it hits the mark. Yeah. Um, this uh, social deduction game where a lot of the time it's people with furrowed brows trying very, very hard to, to, to disguise who they are or, yeah. or pretend they are something that they're not. Yeah. But with, with Secrets, it, it hits the table and you know, uh, just the, the components as well are great, colorful, vibrant, but, but it lends itself to this game being played with, with a smile on everybody's faces. And I've played it now at four players as well as at eight players, and I think both of them work equally well. They're obviously very different games, but uh, it works really well. So I'm looking forward to taking that back to the office and getting some people to try it out. Awesome. Secrets. Check it out. Well, one of your favorite designers, the green <laughs> man. <laughs> This is from Freedom and Freeze. Do you want to talk a little bit about these uh, new fabled games that he's coming out with? These, uh, these, this guy is awesome. <laughs> um, I'm a real huge Freedom and Freeze fan. I'm very, uh, fairly recently managed to get my hands on Fabled Fruit, which yep. I've been after for a while, which I have been playing to death. Um, really enjoying it, and I'm I'm a real fan of this uh, the fabled concept. Um, we 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 started playing Fortress. Um, if you haven't, if if you, if you don't know what the rules are about to play Fortress, don't worry, nobody does. Um, <laughs> it's, it's one of those games that you take out of the box and it essentially reveals the rules as you play it from the deck of cards. We played this with four players, um, absolutely loved it. Um, I'm a big fan of the, the, the Fable concept and this isn't the only game he's brought up. Um, this yeah, year, so he it? came out with one called Fear, which was kind of a numbers game and I watched a few Germans playing it and I didn't quite understand what was going on. I know that there was some adding up of numbers going on, but I couldn't quite get it. Then there was one called Flea, uh, which I believe that's the cooperative one, right? That's the co-op one, which immediately, uh, which immediately just uh, made up your mind for you that that wasn't the one you're going to get. Yeah, but he's he's done quite a lot. And then I also I want to reinforce the idea of Fabled because. For me, legacy is not something that's really grabbed me. So sure. we, you know, we never played Risk Legacy. I never, I haven't played any of the Pandemic Legacy games, and the idea of playing a campaign is not something that I necessarily want to get into. I have been swept up a little bit in the um, cult of the new, and so for me, a game like Fortress, where you play uh, an individual game in just a few minutes and then move on to the next one, and it, it kind of morphs as you go is much more up my my alley yeah. he's great i mean uh j just the just the um <laughs> the games that he comes up with i'm as i said i'm a, as you said i'm a huge huge fan yeah. but I, I i love the way that he's done this i love the way that he's done this fantastic so the last game we're going to talk about today wow <laughs> wow for me for me yeah b before you do the big reveal for me um adil got back from s and said to me you are going to absolutely love this game. I looked it. I looked it up online, and I was like, "Yeah, it 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 seems okay." We played it, um, and wow, yeah. So, so when we finished up last night at almost two o'clock in the morning, um, I mean, I could have played another game. I could have played another game. Yeah. <laughs> Ex libris. So you know, the idea of a game about books is yeah. not necessarily something that we get all the time. And so that's something that, that is in your wheelhouse. Absolutely in my wheelhouse. Um, and added to that, you're a gnome librarian. Yeah. Really? Love it. Take my money. Yeah. Just take my money. So there were a lot of really interesting things about Ex Libris. I think the, it's a slightly overproduced game in terms of you know, the mechanics and the, the stuff that needed to be in the box. It's probably a bigger box than it needed to be. But I really loved the way it all came together. So I loved... The idea of being able to build up your library 
shelf by shelf and putting in new books, drafting the books from different spaces. Uh, one of the things that really got me was the fact that they had shifting action spaces. The, the You draw action spaces equal to the number of players and then every round you only keep one of those. One of those becomes permanent and then the other ones move on. I really enjoyed that and I thought the other thing was having individual um, personalized or, or um, asymmetrical assistants. One, well, one, one, of, one of the assistants is a, is a special action assistant, yeah. which means, I mean, I was the gelatinous cube, I think, which I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but yeah, gelatinous cube, where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the gelatinous cube was great. And um, I, I, I felt like the, uh, the action spaces themselves, one of the, the comments that I've seen online is that people have talked about the, the wording being too small and that you have to actually, you know, that really didn't bother me that much. Not, not at I all. think the tiles themselves were great. You could pick them up, have, have a read. Um, they weren't that difficult. I expected that it might be a bit harder to get into the game, but actually we, we got into it pretty no, quickly. We, I, 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 not an issue for me. Yeah. Um, I've got to admit, um, in keeping with the with the public, with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, with the book theme throughout this game, I felt a bit like I was at the top of the magical faraway tree every time the land mysteriously appeared and then disappeared. <laughs> but it was great. I mean, um, we played the last night a three three player game, yeah. and it was it was fantastic. And I think even at four players, it probably would be really good. Yeah. So I'm I'm looking forward to playing that again. Um, there's there's some depth in there. I think. Um, I, you know, I don't know the extent to which when you're looking for some specific shelf, your ability to find that, you know, so there might be a little bit of luck because there's quite a big deck of uh, library cards. Sure. That being said, though, there are some, there are some um, abilities and there are some mechanics that allow you to actually shuffle through a pile of cards to yeah. try and find what it is you're looking for. Yeah. Um, also, the ability to to throw some cards away and to to draw new cards. So there, so there, so there is that mechanism. I think I didn't find that being so much of a problem. I think once we know the action spaces a bit better, yeah, sure. It also means sure. that you might anticipate certain of them yeah. coming later on in the deck because we did get through all of them by the time the the game ended. I thought that was a very nice. Uh, I thought that was very very nicely done. Yeah, because we actually got to. The the end of the game was triggered, and then we got the last, the last action, action space, space. Yeah. and we didn't yeah. have to reshuffle yeah. any of them. So that was great. It shows a lot of playtesting. Yeah, I mean, you know, I talked about the faraway tree. There's a lot of inner blighting in this. I felt. Yeah, I, I mean, I love the imagery. I thought the the artwork fits really well in terms of the uh, bringing through that experience. And it's one of those where it could have been quite a dry game. But they tried to bring it to life with the yeah, visuals the, the, and with the, the way. The, the, thematically, it was fantastic. I think that, you know all the elements worked for this for me. So a big, a big tick from me. Yeah, I think a, a huge thumbs up from me as well. It's it's something I'd highly recommend. It obviously wasn't just released at Essen. It was released at Gen Con, um, but there were a number of copies available at Essen. And so um, you're going to see more and more about that game coming up. Well, I'm really glad you picked it up. <laughs> Me too, and I'm glad that I forced you guys into playing it last <laughs> night. So that's Ex Libris, one of the games we were really anticipating and probably our best experience of the post Essen sessions. Yeah, I, I, as I say, really, really loved it. But um, talking about the post Essen sessions, we've, uh, we've, we've done some damage this week. The, we've only just covered about a dozen games in this video. We've got a few more to cover before I leave for South Africa and hopefully we'll get a chance to talk about a couple more games. I have no doubt that we will. Um, just, uh, I'm, I'm glad you brought a sturdy suitcase with you <laughs> uh, because it's been, it's been great actually playing these games and having, having someone here to, to sit down and deconstruct them with afterwards. So thank you for joining us and uh, as always, I'm the Board Game Guru. I'm uh, Batman Sasha um, and we'll see you soon. Absolutely. Thanks very much.